I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times, Monday, January 12th, with news from Arkansas. This is a momentous day in the political life of Arkansas. The legislature began its 60-day session today. It's mostly ceremonial today. There's news from it, though. Jeremy Gillum becomes House Speaker, and he announces who his committee chairs will be. Three of the ten standing committees will be headed by Democrats. He demonstrated a little bipartisan air, but it doesn't matter much when, you out, when the Republicans outnumber the Democrats two to one. They'll mostly get their way just the same. The legislature starts with light work. Tomorrow's ceremonial. The governor and constitutional officers will be inaugurated. They'll knock off early Thursday, most likely. They're going to recess Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, which is a state holiday. One big question I've raised on the blog today is whether the legislature intends to continue to claim per diem payments of up to $150 a day, which are supposed to be for expenses, even on their recess days when they're not here at work. That's what they've done in the past. A public interest law group is trying to stop the practice. We'll see if that happens. <clears throat> We learned this morning that uh, Asa Hutchinson's inauguration will be financed, as Mike Beebe's was, by corporate contributions. But he's going to limit his individual corporate contributions to $25,000, which is kind of chump change compared to some states, the Illinois governor. A Republican reformer, he says, is going to spend $10 million in corporate money for his royal swearing in. So we should thank Asa for kind of keeping it on the, on the down-home side. You know, you wonder about the legislative session. Does it really matter? The Arkansas legislature regularly passes far more pieces of legislation than just about any other state. If passage of legislation was a measure of your state's advancement, we'd be well beyond Silicon Valley right now. Of course, we're not. So I take something of a, a skeptical view of, of people who imbue themselves with a great deal of importance about what goes on out there every day. A lot of it's a lot of sound and a lot of fury signifying, as Shakespeare said, well, nothing, not much. Big news today from the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, broken this morning on the Arkansas blog. G. David Gearhart, the chancellor of the state's flagship campus since 2008, sent a letter to Donald Bobbitt announcing he planned to retire July 31st. Uh, he says he wants to spend more time with family. We all are familiar with that euphemism. He'll return to a slot on the faculty. Uh, Gearhart has been popular in some quarters, unpopular in others. He'd gotten in a falling out with the University Board of Trustees because of the Fayetteville campus's resistance and, in fact, competitive effort in terms of the eversity, that is, online education and the university system President Donald Bobbitt has been pushing. But there have been other elements of contention. There was a controversial episode over the advancement division and the firing of, of a top university spokesman. More recently, he's gotten in trouble for some points that work in David Gearhart's favor, in my view. Legislators vowed to take retribution against the campus because Gearhart opposed the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce's effort to beat a civil rights ordinance for gay people in Fayetteville. In any event, Gearhart will be going, but he's got a few more months to deal with the legislature. Could be an uncomfortable time. Still no word out of either the U.S. or Arkansas Supreme Court about further developments on same-sex marriage. The U.S. Supreme Court this week was expected in many quarters to say it would take up the division and the circuits on same-sex marriage rulings. It did not. It refused the case from Louisiana where a district judge has ruled against marriage equality. It seems to be moving toward a strategy to get final rulings from all the U.S. circuit courts before it moves for final decision on this issue, perhaps hoping that all the states will move to consensus on the question. If you're expecting Arkansas to move anytime soon, there's still no word today. The Arkansas Supreme Court is almost two months, two months excuse me, into waiting to decide on an appeal of Judge Chris Piazza's ruling invalidating the state's ban on same-sex marriage. We don't yet know what's going to happen, not entirely sure who's going to rule on it, although a special judge who was appointed before a judgeship changed hands January 1st is still on the case, I, I learned over the weekend. Other local news, City Director Kenneth Richardson was arrested Saturday night for DWI. It looks to be a fair arrest by the Little Rock Police. I raise the point only because the director has sometimes had some contention between, between himself and the Little Rock Police Force. The Little Rock School District had a huge show of police Thursday night at a special board meeting because of a supposed threat against a school board meeting. There's no evidence yet presented by anyone or even a formal police complaint that a threat was made. Having 10 armed officers at a Little Rock school board meeting presents a chilling impact on democracy. We certainly don't want to tolerate threats, but I think everybody owes it to everybody else to, to say just exactly what happened and whether this was really necessary. Big news continues to reverberate from last week's news that Judge Mike, former Judge, excuse me, Mike Maggio, had pleaded guilty to a federal bribery charge for taking campaign contributions in return for lowering a, lowering a multi-million dollar verdict against a nursing home in a damage suit in Faulkner County. I've written for the Arkansas blog, and you might want to take a look, that th this is a story in addition 
DiMaggio's own personal problems has many tentacles. For one thing, will there be further indictments in his specific case? Does Mike Maggio know things, or do other people involved in this case know things that might spread this investigation further? I think the fact that this is tied up with people who have been very interested in the tort reform movement, the effort to change the law to make it harder to sue people over damages will be set back by a public relations disaster of this, of this magnitude. I think there's going to be an uh, impact on the, on the push that some people would like to mount to restore legality of corporate campaign contributions in Arkansas. Michael Morton, a Fort Smith nursing home owner, has contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars. We now know to five of the seven members of the Arkansas Supreme Court to help them get elected to the court. It doesn't necessarily mean they're quid pro quos for that money, but it presents a very ill, Ill appearance. And finally, the, the Gilbert Baker case is a black eye for the new huge Republican majority in Arkansas. He was a leading Republican. He raised money for Republicans almost exclusively, including judges who essentially identify themselves as Republicans. A lot of black eyes, a lot of smear and guilt by association that comes along with this. That's politics. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.